Well, moving on to our next story, the Nickel Highway cave-in happened 10 years ago and it left an indelible imprint on Singapore's elite disaster assistance and rescue team. In part two of our special series on the incident, we look at the rescuers who worked round the clock for four days under conditions described as the most difficult and dangerous since the Hotel New World collapse in 1986. So how has the team enhanced its capabilities for underwater search and rescue operations? This report from another side. This is the same helmet that I used, uh, cleaned up a bit, but many of the scratches are still here. Yeah, uh, the knocks I had on the top of my head and all that. Lieutenant Colonel Kadir Maidin remembers vividly the day his team was activated on 24th April 2004. He was then commander of the DART team. It was only upon reaching the edge of uh, Nickel Highway that, and, we, and when we saw the whole cavity uh, created by the collapse of the MRT uh, structural works, then, then it dawned upon me. Oh. What greeted the team was this, a cave-in spanning the six-lane highway resulting in a 30-meter deep cavity. It was unlike any other structural collapse the DART team had faced. This is collapse, but we've got a tide coming in. At that time, the marina barrage was still under construction, so the tide was in. Uh, there's water, seawater. The rescuers had to work in chest-high, turbulent, muddy waters amidst unstable, sharp, exposed metal and concrete structures. At that time, they were not equipped with proper equipment to conduct underwater search and rescue operations. So, they improvised using masks worn for firefighting operations to dive into the murky waters and using their bare hands to try and find bodies. Breathing apparatus sets uh, are made of uh, composite, uh, uh, the, the, the cylinders are composite cylinders and they tend to float, so we couldn't be having them uh, harnessed to our back. So we had to again improvise with longer hoses, have the cylinders somewhere else, the hose transports the air to the face mask so the user only has a face mask on him so that he could go underwater without having a, a composite cylinder push his body up. You know. Since then, the SEDF has implemented several measures to enhance its search and rescue capabilities. Among them, certifying all DART specialists in diving and water rescue skills, investing in sonar equipment to track its divers and detect drowned victims, as well as purchasing water pumps powerful enough to suck out silt-ridden muddy waters. Beyond enhancing its operational capabilities, Lieutenant Colonel Kadir says the Nickel Highway incident has also left a deep impression among Singaporeans of the work the SCDF does. Over the years, um, uh, post uh, Nickel Highway, I also thought that people came uh, and joined SCDF uh, and make it their career because of, of what they saw uh, at Nickel Highway. You know, they, were inspired by they were inspired by some of the work that we did. Now this stone located just a few metres away from Nickel Highway was laid by the construction company involved in the Circle Line project. It was placed here in memory of the victims who lost their lives during the Nickel Highway collapse. And in fact, it still bears the name of Mr Heng Yao Piao, the 40-year-old foreman whose body was never recovered. Well, if you get the chance, you may not know, but all uh, fire stations here in Singapore are open uh, every Saturday morning from 9 to 11 a.m. for the public to go and make a visit. So it's a rather interesting trip, i got to admit. I, I went recently.